Uh, thank you, Suri. Um, I'd also want to start uh, by thanking my group for um, a, a rich and vibrant discussion um, over something which is technically quite challenging. Um, so this question of how to incentivize governments to take action for preparedness was our starting point. And I think broadly what our discussions did is discuss two related but important subsets of this question. So one subset relates to actually motivating governments to want to um, incorporate these risks into their decision-making processes and to invest in preparedness appropriately. And then we also had sort of a set of discussions about what are the technical gaps that need to be filled to allow that kind of analysis to happen. Um, and, you know, broadly our responses to the, to the will side of that discussion, to the incentive side, was to say, look, the, um, there are two key challenges that we face when we're trying to get governments to think about investing in preparedness. Um, the first is that actually, you know, preparedness is a long-term issue that requires a short-term investment, um, and that's always going to be problematic. Um, and unless we can find ways to make this more salient to, to governments, to development partners, we may find that actually these investments never really happen. Um, and then allied to that was the idea that actually the way that you make a topic or an area salient is that you connect it to the things in the short term that people really need. And we had a very rich discussion um, that focused on actually what can we do to demonstrate what the benefits are, where the overlaps, the synergies are for investing in preparedness. And if we don't have analyses, technical analyses, that, that speak to, to those synergies, we may find that we're continuing just to sort of shout into, into the wind on this and that those governments that aren't interested won't engage. Um, so it seems sort of rather odd that, you know, we're in another global development and, and health forum and what we're saying is that we need to align to local priorities. Um, but it's a powerful point that, that then actually opens up some questions on the technical analysis side. Um, so moving on to what do we think needs to happen to support this, um, to build the capability and the capacity to do these um, assessments um, that will shift the needle, that will change people's uh, expenditure decisions. Um, you know, the, the first sort of big ask was actually, right, let's do some technical analyses of synergies. Um, so there's a, a very interesting suggestion made um, to say, okay, let's look at large development partners like the fund, look at the, the extensive funding they already put into disease control activities. Um, can we come up with, can we calculate the, the, the added spend, the sort of the bolt-on expenditure that would be needed um, for, let's say, a malaria control program to also start meeting some of these sort of specific elements of the joint external evaluation shopping list? Um, and that maybe if we start building out from those existing expenditure streams, um, and what that requires is a different type of um, economic and cost analysis to what we've been doing uh, previously. I think most of the work that we've done starts with a blank piece of paper and says, um, how much money are you going to lose with pandemics and what could you um, sort of benefit from if we invested in preparedness? Um, so it's a, it's a subtle but important shift to meeting the world where it is. Um, the second sort of element of, of building to local priorities is also recognizing that there are other actors who are going to be important here. We had a discussion again about the role of the private sector who are substantially exposed to some of these economic risks and at the moment are pr you know, principally excluded as a partner in, in some of these analyses. Um, so um, a suggestion was put forward that we should think about um, proposing analyses looking at the effects of infectious disease outbreaks on foreign direct investment. Um, that actually linking um, disease outbreaks to commercial and investment activity, one might be a powerful way of getting governments to pay more attention to this. They can see their own self-interest in it. But it also might allow us to mobilize um, the private sector and the investment sector um, as partners in helping make the case and hold um, governments who don't protect their populations to account. Um, now, the, the drawback, the challenge, obviously, that we, we saw with that is that when you begin to think about mobilizing private sector around investment, that only works for countries for whom foreign direct investment is a major political uh, lever at that point. Um, and so for the 75 IDA countries, that's not necessarily the right mechanism. Um, we also sort of recognize the challenge of incorporating economic risks into things like sovereign credit rating assessments um, as being a potentially powerful tool. Um, but again, that doesn't really solve the problem for the Ida countries. So for the, those lower income countries who are um, still on sort of the earlier parts of the development journey, it's really important for us to get these partnership assessments right. Um, there's a lot of faith and trust and, and, and hope in uh, sort of the Hopkins NTI um, 
work, assessment work. I don't know if Beth Cameron's still in the room, but we've just put a lot of weight on, on your shoulders to help us resolve uh, these macroeconomic impact assessments. Um, there are a few sort of um, needs that we thought um, had to be in place for us to move forwards on this. So we always ask for more data. Um, more data is always helpful. Um, more micro-level data and data at the country um, to make the case to local decision makers would be helpful. Um, but we recognize that actually, you know, that data isn't always going to be there. We're going to re still rely on modeling approaches. Um, there's a very important discussion, I thought, um, partly because I proposed it, around capacity development for local analysis. Um, uh, you know, we look at things like the African CDC as a, a fantastic development. Um, you know, it's great that that capacity is now being built. We think it's really important that um, local public health infrastructure is built also builds with it um, capacity to perform economic analyses. We think that the public health community and the development community in countries are going to be better able to make these cases to local decision makers to have this integrated decision making approach if they've got that capacity sort of built. So we started thinking about ways that we could contribute as a community to developing that. Um, and there's some interesting ideas about programs that were put forwards. Um, uh, and then sort of the last, and there are many good points, and I apologize to my group if I'm not including them all, but um, the last, I think, really important point that was made a number of times was that actually numbers aren't enough. Um, this isn't just a prosaic argument. Um, there's a political um, willingness that has to be there. Um, and what we need to think about doing as a community is doing much better at capitalizing on converting that political interest when it arises into something more institutional, more bureaucratic, that outlasts that political interest. Um, if our principal problem as a community is that we're constantly swinging from panic to neglect, um, making good on the panic when it arises becomes important. And there are suggestions that what we should be doing here is looking at previous examples where that systematization has happened. Um, with SARS in China, there are parallels drawn with the global financial crisis and changes to the banking sector. Um, if we can find ways to convert those short, intense bursts of political in act interest into something that develops new structures, new capacity in the bureaucracies, um, what we might actually find is that we've got functions and capacities to make these arguments um, that build up over time and that move us in the right direction. Um, so I'm going to stop there because I think the discussion is probably more important than my summary. I apologize, but if my group, do, please do jump in if there's uh, an important idea that I've left out. <laughs>